This is Michael Forster with Code Cloud. Hi, welcome. We're going to talk today about AWS Cloud Practitioner, the certification exam. As you probably know, there's a new version coming out on September 19th which means that you can take the old one up until September 18th, which is CLF 01, and then starting September 19th, you get to take CLF 02. But what's the difference? How does this change your study patterns? Is there anything for you to be aware of? I'm gonna give you a little preview. The short answer is maybe, but most likely not. But let's talk about it in detail just in case you're concerned. All right, let's dive in. Don't forget, by the way, if you love these AWS updates, hit subscribe, leave some comments, catch me at michael at codecloud.com, or even better, go to codecloud.slack.com and catch me in AWS courses. I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so up here on the screen, you should see on the left, it says CLF01, and on the right, it says CLF02. <laughs> that one's a slightly different size. We'll switch them out just a little bit. <laughs> Here we go, make them a little bigger. Okay, so they should be about the same size now. So to say this is that for the most part, I'm just gonna walk through the exam guide side by side with AWS, just so you can see the difference. So notice here the target candidate should have six months. That hasn't really changed a whole lot. It does say cloud design, implementation, or operations, right? So same thing that I said before. These candidates might be in early stages of pursuing a career, no real changes there. Recommended knowledge, let's go take a look at that. Notice that the language pretty much hasn't changed. Same thing, all right? Out of scope. The only thing that's really changed is that migration used to be out of scope and then business applications used to be out of scope and now they're in scope. Weird, right? In terms of exam content, guess what? Things have pretty much stayed the same, right? Multiple choice and multiple response, so two types of questions. You get basically 65 questions, 50 of them are gonna be the actual exam and the other 15, which we don't even know about. So telling us doesn't even really help because guess what, it's still 65 question exam, you've got 90 minutes, you don't really know what the 15 underscore questions are, you really have no idea. The other thing is that the exam results haven't changed, it's still a minimum score of 700 to pass, right? There's no penalty for guessing. Now this is where things start to get a little interesting. The content outline is a little different. So notice that over on the left-hand side under cloud concepts, it used to be 26% and now it's gone down by 2%. Now it's 24. Security and compliance was 25. Now it accounts for 30% of the exam. That is a significant 5% change. In terms of domain three technology, it was 33%. It went up 1% to 34. Not really a big deal, frankly. And then notice this, that domain billing and pricing has gone down from 16% on the left to 4% down to 12% on the right. So the biggest like significant change is that security went up by 5% of the exam and billing went down by 4%. Now, does that translate to anything significant? No. Honestly, that's pretty much a question or two. So does it really matter? Not really, no. Now if we go take a look at the cloud concepts, like just looking at domain one versus domain two, Notice the statements have gotten a little crisper, right? <clears throat> Define the benefits of AWS Cloud. So this is like knowledge of value proposition, identifying some aspects of the design principles, skills and economics. It seems like they're maybe just have rearranged a few things. But here's one thing that's interesting is that they've still got like design principles over here and then they've got design principles over here. But before, they only had a couple of different design principles, which you can see explicitly in CodeCloud's course, right? But then over here, what happened is that they actually said, do you understand the pillars of the well-architected framework and the differences between the pillars of the well-architected framework? So you're going to see a little bit of an insertion video happen for our version of the course, which, by the way, is due out soon, which is going to insert the pillars of the well-architected framework into the course just to make sure that you're familiar with security and reliability and performance and cost optimization and sustainability and operational excellence. And I just want to say sustainability, I don't know that I've ever even heard of anyone asking a question about sustainability on the cloud practitioner exam in particular, but in really on any exam. So I'm not even sure that pillar is ever really touched, but I digress. They did add the well-architected framework as in scope in the new CLF 02 exam. As we scroll down and we take a look at concepts, including provisioning, configuration management, again, no real changes there because they had cloud economics before up here, right? So 
no big shifts. If we then take a look at domain two when it comes to security and compliance, do note that the shared respons responsibility model was big on the left. Guess what? Still big on the left, right. The compliance was a big idea on the left-hand side for CLF01. Guess what? Still big on the right. No real big changes. They do call out a few like specific things like encryption and stuff like that. Yeah, but they're general concepts. So it's not any different than what was in the original CLF01. We come down and talk about access management capabilities. Guess what? That was also still a task statement in domain two from before. Task statement 2.4, where it says identify components for resources, same thing here as well. So no real change there. So it looks like the security domain, other than going up 5% in terms of questions and coverage, really hasn't changed in structure. So to recap, thus far, the only thing that's really shifted is that security questions have gone up, billing questions have gone down, and they changed domain one to include the well-architected framework, which is just understanding the differences between the pillars. Thus far, that's the most significant change with CLF02. Let's take a look at domain three. So domain three has cloud techno and technology services, which is just the same as technology services. Notice that defined methods of deploying and operating in the cloud. Um, yeah, there's probably yeah, no real differences there. Looks like the same thing. Then we've got global infrastructure. Guess what? Test statement 3.2 also defines the global infrastructure. So no real changes there. But hold on. I just want to stop for a second. We included this in our CLF01 course just to make sure you understood what local zones were. But wavelength zones is an addition because that's where you deploy cellular technologies on AWS. This was not in the old CLF01 exam. But just to be clear, if you took our course, it was already included. Not a big change. Then edge zones and benefits of edge locations and all that. Guess what? Already there, right? Even in the old one, there was Global Accelerator, which is a relatively new service. And then task statement 3.3 says, identify compute services. <coughs> What's interesting is that 3.3 and CLF01 was basically saying, I want you to describe a bunch of different services. But 3.3 over here says, I want you to know the compute services. So it looks like what they've done is they've shifted CLF01 to being knowledgeable, like, in a broad scope around compute services, storage services, networking services, and database services, which by the way, was exactly how it was always scoped, to being explicit about the task statements and saying, look, instead of it just being one task statement on the left-hand side, we want compute services task statement, we have a database services task statement, we have a network services task statement, and we have a storage services task statement. So they did that, but then they added one other scope to the shift here that wasn't actually part of the original CLF01 exam is that they added artificial intelligence and machine learning services, analytic services. This was previously not in scope for CLF01, but it's now included for CLF02. So we've got two significant changes. The well-architected framework has been added in to domain one, and it looks like in domain three, they've added machine learning and artificial intelligence services at a high level. Now. We didn't necessarily have that in our course, so you're gonna see that as a change, is where there's an addition of a machine learning course inside the set. And let's see, so that's a big change. And then the other thing is 38, identify services from other in-scope categories. For example, could be from developer tools capabilities, front-end services, IoT services. We had a bunch of these capabilities in there already, but notice that they've added other things in here, like the code services, which were previously not really in focus. If we look over here, there was nothing over on this side for code services. So a couple of extra things get added here just to expand the scope for cloud practitioner. And then we've got domain four, which rolls right into billing and pricing. So notice that over here, there is a thing about technology support, trusted advisor, a couple other pieces, and we don't see it here in domain three like we did before. Where does it live? We had already put it in CLF01, and so we're already matching what's happening in CLF02. So if we look at domain billing and pricing and just kind of scroll down to that section, what you'll notice is compare and contrast various pricing models, already got that. Understanding resources available for billing support, already have that. We already have some pieces around account structures as well including technical resources and support options, which again, was in domain previously. So this is a big shift. So previously this task statement that says identify AWS technical resources and support options was previously in domain three, 
Now it's under billing and pricing under domain four. So we've got that included in there. And then that's it. Task 4.3 pretty much ends the whole thing. So again, just to rehash the shifts, domain one, the well-architected fr framework was added. So now we have the six pillars of the well-architected framework. There was a shift in domain three where we've now added machine learning services and a couple of other previously out of scope services in as well. And then the support options got moved from domain three into domain four, which isn't really gonna make a difference for us taking the exam. Just make sure that you're still covering the support options. Let's take a look at the appendix. So the new appendix says what might be covered on the exam. And you notice this list is a lot longer with CLF02. Notice that the cloud adoption framework is here, right? There's mm, more things about costs and cost management. Some of the things about machine learning, migration is now onto the thing, right? There's a couple of like extra things here. So make sure you take a look at the CLF02 guide if you're going for that. If we go forward into specific services and features that are specifically in scope, you'll see the analytics has gotten a lot bigger, whereas previously it was just a little bit shorter. Now it's gotten a lot bigger. Notice that the application integration section is bigger. There wasn't previously a business productivity section. Compute is about the same, but notice that it now includes local zones and wavelength, whereas before it had all the other options. Container still contains the three that we're most interested in, but notice they put the container registry in instead of just listing Fargate. To be clear, Fargate should have never been listed here because it's not really a standalone technology. Wink. Cost management, previously not listed here, but now it is. So now we've got that. Neither was customer engagement, also added. Notice that databases is about the same size. Neptune, Redshift, ooh, they put Neptune in there, and memory DB. And it looks like they shifted Elasticash out and Redshift out because they put Redshift in analytics. A couple of developer tools. Notice this list was shorter before. It was CodeStar, CodeBuild, CodeCommit. And notice here, it's pretty much every single developer tool they have, almost every one, actually. Big deal. Customer engagements here before where it wasn't listed, end user computing was added here. Again, that wasn't in the old CLF01 exam. You can see it. Front end web and mobile, that wasn't here before, but now it is. So you're, you're seeing a bunch of additions here on the CLF as far as in-scope services. What that means for you is that any service that's been added over here on the right, you just need to know what it is. Don't panic. All they've added is the well-architected framework. They added a couple of machine learning services and developer services that you didn't know before, but you just need to know what they are. You need to know one line about what they are and what they're used for. That's it. It's just that simple. So I recommend that you go through this at some point, but you, as you can see, a bunch has been added. Machine learning has been added. IoT has been added. Front-end web and mobile has been added. But a lot of the stuff remains predominantly the same. So it looks to be about maybe a 10 to 20% expansion in services. But for the most part, I think you're going to recognize that most of this is just all the same. Let's see how far down we go. Storage. Oh, serverless. Oh, and they put Fargate underneath there. They love talking about Fargate as a separate service. I have no idea why. All right, but the rest of this, as far as like security, identity, compliance, management, these are all things that were covered before. Notice that migration and transfer is a whole new family. So you definitely wanna make sure you go through there and understand what that looks like. And so overall, they've taken the CLF02 exam and they've made it a much more expansive and comprehensive exam, added some meat to it. But let's be clear, it's just that superficial understanding of what does this service do? And do you understand what that service is used for? Like how to apply it? What's a use case for it? I'm Michael Forrester. I hope that clears that up for you. I hope it makes it clear that the new CLF02 exam just has a few key additions to it, including the well-architected framework, the cloud adoption framework, some additions to the machine learning services, and an expansion of the services that they could ask you what they do. That's it. Meanwhile, thanks for listening. Appreciate you. If you have any questions, hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you at the next AWS video.